Welcome back everybody, it's Chris. And if you remember the last time I used the old 270, the water pump got the wiggles. So I figure, well, it's uh, wheat's not quite done. We've gotten rain the last two days. Not a significant amount, enough to keep everything wet. We also had a very heavy dew last night. So uh, just uh, not sure if the wheat will even dry out enough today. I'll check it this afternoon. Turn on the gas. Well, there's less than 20 hours on a oil change, so I guess we don't need to mess with that while we're in there. I do also have a leaky steering hose in the dash somewhere. Might look into that. It seems to leak worse when it's cold out, so I'm guessing it's leaking at a crimp. hedgerow used to be we buried that and soil just ain't as good there from digging it up the deer are up here working on the headlands won't be long we'll be able to peel some ears back and see what kind of yield we're going to expect where can i fit you maybe like this. The view is nice. Or maybe I should point towards the toolbox. you go bounce between three and four hundred rpm miss the water cooler and the chair move oh, chair That's probably not too bad. I can get the door closed if I need to. I could just pull something out, but. Yeah, it's definitely leaking. I think we need to figure out where that's coming from. Shouldn't be too hard <laughs> at that speed. It might have to go out and back in, depending on uh, which hose is leaking. If it's one of them specialty hoses, I'll probably order a new one. Let's get some side panels off. Bolts here and uh, I think just some latches in the front. Look, most of it hit the bucket. And now everybody has to go to the bathroom. Well, we want to get the water level, coolant level down below the water pump. It doesn't have to be uh, much lower than that, but you have to drain most of it. Uh, we'll get the uh, alternator loosened up, belt off, fan off, all that good stuff. It might be better than this ratchet wrench. Get my fingers away from the blades a little bit. Still amazed that this uh, water pump ain't leaking for as loose as the shaft is. Of 
but a win is a win. I'll take it. The line between the thermostat and the water pump, that's got to come off. The belt's easier to come off now. I'm pretty sure I replaced that when I got the tractor. It looks like it's in good shape. I wonder if it's below this level yet. I bet it's below this level. But not that low. I've mentioned it in other videos, but not everybody watches every video. This is a bleed offline, so if any air gets trapped in the top of the water pump, it can percolate out through the thermostat housing and, and the radiator, and you don't get a, a, a vapor lock, basically. I've got the bypass hose loosened up, kind of peeled on this. This hose kind of looks like it needs to be replaced. Look at that. I probably got something around. And let's see, so we got the two 3 8 bolts on this side. There's a total of four that hold it on. I think I'm going to go ahead and put new antifreeze in it. The stuff that's in there looks kind of dirty. Somehow or another, these water pump bolts always get a little cooling in them and a little crusty and don't like to turn. Okay, that's the one that doesn't come out because of the pulley, but it should be out enough now. I think I can get the other three from the other side. Well, my thoughts were I could get this tractor, this water pump fixed, and maybe try again for um, mowing hay second cutting. It's not gonna be much of a challenge. There's not a lot out there with the dry weather. And boy, that leak uh, just a little too extreme. To... So I don't know if I'll get that fixed in time. I'm hoping to mow that hay this week. It's getting way past its prime. But it seems like we don't get enough dry days in a row to, to do anything. Oh man, get a bigger persuader. All right, everybody cross your fingers that I turn it the right way and that it comes out. Come on, baby. And not snap off, because we don't need that in our lives. Let's go back in a little bit. Help break that crusty. Stuff on the threads. This is a good reason to put the never sees on. Let's go back again. A little back and forth, like I say, helps those little rust particles that are in there and help break them up, get them out of the threads. I think we've got her. Well, that could have been a Reeker's level. Oh man. What do you think, a six? I think that's a goat, two cows, and two chickens. Or no, that's two goats, two cows, and two chickens. My math skills are showing. Yeah, look how rusty that baby is. One left. Can I even get it with this big old Nope. Let's try her with the end wrench. Ooh, same thing again. Come on, baby. All right, we'll try the same trick. Go back in a little bit. Oh, 
back and forth wiggle. even better better still turning hard enough but she's coming out there she's going easy now we are off the reeker scale Only a slight tremor didn't even shake the pictures on the wall. Yeah, that one's got some crust on it too. They'll definitely get anti seize when they go back together. All right, now the only thing that's holding it on is magic and rust. And maybe some gasket. Look at that. Okay, I just had to rotate it. It's, I don't think the exhaust manifold's so hot it's going to melt my magnet now. There we go. And water pump is removed. If I'm seeing this right, I think it's the top, top left one that is leaking. It's all wet. It pretty much looks like a remove the gas tank kind of situation to fix it. That's what you guys wanted to hear, ain't it? Now I'm going to fire up for just a moment. I'm going to double check, make sure I ain't got anything by the crankshaft that's going to go crazy. Well, this very leftmost line is getting quite wet, so it's definitely following that down. It doesn't mean it's the leaker. That one looks homemade, though, so it's probably the leaker. So maybe... I will see what all is in there before I order a line. Maybe there's some kind of homemade thing I can fix. But that means draining the gas tank. Yay. Because it's fairly full. Because I was ready to mow hay. Boy, if you don't have one of these siphon hoses. I think I got this one off from Amazon. I'll have to put a link in my store. But there's just a marble in there that acts like a check ball. You shake it and boom it's siphoning the gas out this big one goes pretty quick I got a smaller one I keep in the other barn we'll take some of this and put it in the 880 and get the weight of this tank down so it's not so heavy to lift out yeah, she's almost there. Close enough. It also works great in the other direction. Come on. There we go. I just need to make sure my cup don't runneth over. Oh, there's room. Of course, the higher up you have it, the, you know, there's five gallons in there. There's definitely got to be room for five gallons in here. I did bale some hay, ran the auger. There. Let that last little bit drain out. Easy peasy. Oh, there's definitely room for more in there. That's good. I will say um, some of those, especially the diesels, have a anti-splash thing in there and it won't let those through. So they're not going to work on everything. But if you got a big enough opening for this hose to fit through, it's going to work. It's starting to get heavy already. Okay. Everything's on, attached, detached, whatever the word is for the fuel tank. Should lift right out. There's just a little bit of gas in it. We'll see how 
strong part of the like, oh yeah, that's not bad. Oops, caught the fuel, the choke line. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Like I say, a little bit of gas left in there. Mouse nest. Dirty, dirty. Job for the shop vac, I guess. Everything's so dark and gray. Maybe I get in closer. Okay, I would definitely say I can see where the rubber is pushed out on the hose. It's leaking here, but that's a homemade fitting. Someone took the old steel part and put a uh, flare on it with a nut so that a, just a regular uh, JIC fitting hose could go up to it and same on the other end. That's something I can make. So I don't have to buy the expensive Agco hose. I was thinking about doing this with some others. Taking the steel line off and getting a, sorry about the glare there, so close to the door. Take the steel line off and then at the other end put a flare into it with a nut and then you got your uh, steel part you need and then you can just use a regular old straight hose from there on out well it's been a couple of days since i was working on this i was able to get wheat finished last day and i was it was humid as all get out running in a low area with some down wheat so i haven't got her dating down by the ground and with all that humidity stuff was just tough and then you know throw in dull knives and worn guards and stuff i should have taken care of sooner or well haven't yet and all of a sudden stuff ain't coming in and that's when i noticed that the uh cutter bar had broke where's the rest of it and it broke close to the drive end. Of course, it's going to do that because, you know, that's driving the most of it. It didn't even break at a hole. It broke right in the middle. And so I brought it over here. Fortunately, I was just running across the road. And I thought I'd weld the two halves back together to get myself done. Then I remembered I still had an old cutter bar around with probably equally dull knives, but was in one piece. And I didn't have a whole lot to finish up. So slid this one out. And, um... Slid the old one back in, and by golly, it got me done. So, we're just going to slide this out of the way for now. And get back to work on a water pump. First thing I want to do is get a depth on this uh, water pump pulley. Make sure I get it set back to the same height as before, so the belts line up. All that good stuff. So, I find that to be a good method, just to... Set the calipers to where it's at. It doesn't have to be down to the thousandths of an inch, but the truer it is, the better uh, your belt's going to wear, all that good stuff. I need to, before I get too far, get the plate off the back. I think we'll put that in a vise because I'll use my impact screwdriver thing to get this off. Well, it doesn't look too bad, but it's definitely got the wiggles. 
Okay. Well, in someone's in infinite wisdom, they changed the bolt that holds the alternator tensioning bracket to a stud, so I had to pull that stud out, get my support here for the pulley. I can't get my clamshell on it because of the tube here, so I think I've got the best coverage I can get. So let's uh, see if I can't break something. Pump can move. Let's get this bolt up just a little better. And let's go. There she goes. Oop. It's catching a little over here. Pull this block back just a little bit. There we go. Probably the bolt ain't gonna be quite long enough. Nope. But the idea is, uh, since I'm pulling the pulley off the shaft, you want to support this pulley. The rest of the water pump's just on along for the ride. Of course, you want to support it as good as possible because it's cast iron. You don't want it breaking. Yeah, I didn't have much to go. There should be a snap ring in the top of here. Oh, I can kind of see it. Let's go get that out. Get in there. That wasn't too bad. Now we got to push this out and we want to support the water pump here because out here could crush things. So the closer you can keep it to where you're pressing, the better. Well, I got the new bearing out of the water pump and this bearing's gonna work nice. Water pump bearing slides through this old bearing, just great. Old bearing fits on pump, just nice. It can take uh, any roughness to the edge of the blocks here on the press and not to transfer them into the into the pump body and ruin something okay old bearing from who knows what i think that's a pto shaft bearing now that i think about it center that up good oh yeah i like the looks of that now I just need to find a bolt to drive it with. All right, this half inch bolt ought to do the job. I like it. The impeller will hit against the housing. Yeah, there's some in and out play on that bearing too. She was done. Impeller is free. Pull this back up, get it out of the way. Yeah, well, the old ceramic is cracked, probably after getting pressed like that. Like that. There we go. Yeah, that's enough. I don't even have to hardly use the pressure. Don't you do that. We'll just let it fall on the floor. Like that. And it's out. Yeah, let's see. We'll... Don't look bad, but we'll put the new one in. We're not going to save it. It's not worth the saving. I can see where the pillar blades are shined up just a little bit. Probably that wiggle, they were making just a little contact. But I think everything's going to be fine there. 
So I need to knock the seal out and then I can uh, just get everything cleaned up. I'll chase the threads in these holes so I don't have trouble with the screws going back in. Get it all good and clean before we start reassembly. I think I know why uh, it didn't leak. All this crud right here was packed around the back side of the seal. And there, and then I look at the wheat hole. You can't even really tell it's there. It was blocked up pretty good. So it probably was leaking at least slightly. But there was enough crud in the way to keep all the coolant in. Kind of amazing because that's all under pressure, but there it is. I found a water pump kit on eBay. Normally these things are about a couple hundred bucks and you're money wise, you're just as far ahead to buy a new one. I don't even think they take a core back anymore. And um, this was a new old stock one that's got the old style seal that doesn't require the special driver. Um, for years we always kept, this was an inch and a sixteenth socket, I believe, inch and a quarter. It's right on that nut there on the press. Works awesome as a driver for that seal. We'll take it over here to the bench. The smaller end of the shaft goes through to the impeller. And so the seal doesn't seal the shaft. It seals the ceramic that's against the impeller, which seals the shaft. So you can stick this in first and not have to worry about the shaft dragging on it or anything. I suppose I should put a little sealant around here just to keep it all nice and dry. A little bit of Permatex, aviation form of gasket, socket, and boom. Okay, small end goes in and it's got this little brass slinger. So that way if the seal does weak, leak just a little bit, that's what the weep hole's all about that's down here is a uh, little bit of coolant gets by or whatever it can come out this hole and the slinger kind of helps keep it from going into the bearing and it doesn't instantly ruin the bearing so you got a chance to get it fixed right all right i like to give it a little push in i cleaned up the hole so it's not going too bad then back off that way, if it's a little cockeyed and ain't got pressure, it can straighten out. Yeah, that's going easy enough, relatively speaking. I guess I'm going to have to actually put pumping pressure on it now. And you'll see the snap ring groove. And then I feel the pressure increase, and we call that good. We do not want to put too much on it and bust the housing. So there's some uh, there's some deals out there. Someone else, you know, bought a kit, never got the pump redone. Maybe they sold the tractor, gave up on it, cleaning house. They just want to get rid of some of that stuff, and I guess 50 bucks is more than uh, than zero bucks. So they get a little something out of their mistake. I get a little something out of their mistake. And you probably could order some of these parts individually. Like the uh, ceramic is a 106490A. I think that's the same on just about all of them. And it's ceramic with a rubber embedded into it. There we go. Ceramic, totally ceramic on this side, rubber on this side. And it goes in with a ceramic down towards the seal and that's how it seals is the ceramic face turns against that and then this rubber keeps any coolant from coming through the shaft and what we've always used is the the original lubricant spit let's get some on there well it wasn't that nice of it to for the battery to die as I was pushing that on there. But it slid right on. So we're back over to the press to put the impeller on. And then we'll have to dope up some gasket. 
they feel like they're still pliable. Should be good there. Okay, where did my impeller go? This we just push down until it gets, we are supporting it or pushing against the shaft on the, the bottom here. So we're not actually pushing on the housing any because that's we're pushing onto the shaft. We don't need to support the housing. We need to support the shaft. Get it started. There we go. Let it square up a little bit. And we want the impellers to be close to the housing without quite touching. And my eyes ain't what they used to be. It'll usually rebound just a skosh. I should probably get a feeler gauge and stick in there. Well, they're close. Ooh, I just heard a touch. All right, we're gonna call that good. Turns without touching, but it is close. Now, put the uh, pulley back on. I want to support the shaft because once again pushing something onto the shaft So you want to support the shaft. I'll just get a half-inch bolt and stick in that hole Same one I use to push stuff out Okay, not only do we want to support that shaft I'm getting that bolt in there I guess I got it we want to remember this bolt will not pass by the pulley, so we want to get it in there. And I did have a coating of uh, Never Seize on it and kind of wiped some of it off with my hand. The other three bolts will go in fine, but that one, no. I gotta go get my caliper so I can uh, check the depth on that and get it back to where it was. She's close. I'm thinking there's a little bit of a ledge in there. I might have been measuring off from that, but I can also see the mark where uh, where it used to be. catch that just a skosh more and then my bolt tipped over it's got my fingers in here so I can you know hurt myself and feel it move. It is just purely the press fit that holds this pulley on the shaft and makes everything turn. We're gonna call that good. Oh look, so here's my gasket that came with the kit and here's my water pump well crud I bet I have the right one we might as well check the one that goes against the block I also have that second kit that I'm pretty sure was the exact same part number so uh, probably just as wrong as this one Yeah, this is for like the 
bigger, like the three tens in them, I'm guessing, because it's wider. All right, someone's gotta go dig through his parts stash and wait a minute. No. As long as I gotta go and dig up a gasket, I might as well take this hose up there where the hose machine is too and get that made. Well, look at that big old mud wasp nest in there. This appears to be the fending line. I think if I tilt it, I don't think that's going to help things any. Maybe it will. Yeah, it will. There. Oh yeah, there's a split in the hose right, right there. It's kind of wet around it too. We're gonna go with that the offending problem. And as I was mentioning earlier, someone took the original steel end of the line. I don't want them. Probably doing it off camera, pulling a Ross on you. The original steel lines, the original hoses, you can see it there, went right into a crimp. Someone took uh, the original and uh, made a flare fitting on the other end. And it's working. I like that because then I can, uh, I think I'll have to do that in the future. I can just make a new hose with these fittings on it. Straight hose, easy fittings, save a lot of money. I bought this kit, pretty sure off of eBay. Oh, I'm sorry, pretty sure off of Amazon. If I did buy it off of Amazon, I'll put a link in. But it's just a plug, JIC flare or uh, JIC fittings, caps and pl or plugs. Got it when I was working on the combine a couple of years back and uh, didn't want to have to drain the whole system. And so uh, quickly unhooked it, put a plug in. Actually, I hooked a shop vac up to the reservoir. And so when I unhooked it, that pulled the oil back into the reservoir. And then it gave me a moment to get the caps on and tightened up and then I turned the shop back off the oil was still in the system and no mess I can't remember if I was doing YouTube then but I should have recorded it okay they did not flare it it's some kind of uh, oh compression fitting which requires a special end that I might not have Guess I'll have to go look for that. I might have to order a hose or that compression thing's on there so I can't get the nut back far enough to uh, put a uh, flare on it. Okay, old hose hitting. And I should be able to double check the gasket off this plate. I'll go hunting. Now here we are in the original dealership building. 
and I thought that looked like one of our crimps, but we're not the only one with those one of those machines. But by golly, here's a fitting I took out. That and I bought this tractor for my uncle, so they pretty much got all their service done here. And that screws on there. And it's got a compression fitting in there. So I don't really need the fitting, the nut. I just need the end on the new hose, which I can do. Let's just test this baby out. New hose end on old fitting. Before I go cutting up hose, I think that's gonna work. Oh, not enough air pressure yet. Da, 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 da. She's coming up. Compressor caught up. Get these caps off from here, slide her in, and should be good there. There, I think it started. And that one's hooked up. Looks like I did my usual trick of probably making the hose just a little too long. Always worried about it being too short. Yeah, that's gonna miss the throttle shaft, all right. I took some heater hose and sliced a, cut off a chunk, sliced it open, slid it over that hydraulic hose to help protect it from rubbing against the tank and the brace or the frame right there. That should definitely help. Let's get back to the water pump. Well, I dug through and sure enough, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Dang it. I thought that lined up. I'm sure there's more in there. I didn't watch every hole close enough. That top one sits just a skosh high. We can solve that pretty easy. All the rest line up. Just have to cut a little bit of gasket out there at the hole. It'll be fine. If I get the other bolts in first, it'll get everything all good and lined up. So the gasket doesn't move on me and I can cut that little bit out. Okay, let's see a uh, new hose there. I had some stock hose around. It was two and an eighth of an inch. At least that's what fit. Uh, surface cleaned up, chase the holes with a tap for the water pump got the bolts there and they got the anti-seize on them water pumps ready to go gaskets doped up I do believe she's ready to go back in Let's see if I remember right I got it turned like that maybe I'll slide the gasket in there after I get it closer so I don't tear it up on something Should thread in with ease because everything's been clean. I run a die down the bolt because they were a little cruddy from the rust. Uh, there should be another one down here. Probably before I tighten all this down, I should probably, I got that new bypass hose came so I don't have to rob the one off the 1855. Should probably get that on there in case I have to 
pull it back off to get the hose in place. Let's do that. Oh, let's see. We want to make sure we index these uh, pointies hose clamps in a way that we can tighten the buggers. I would say that's going to work. I could go that way. Either way, they're going to face the front. It has a spring inside it that helps keep the hose from collapsing from the suction. Oh, look at that. I got it on and I forgot to put on the hose clamp. Silly me. And you know what? The temperature sensor line should probably be behind it anyway, so we're just gonna pull it back down. Flip that around there. Put that there. There, that looks better. Yes, yes it does. Okay. I did get both the hose clamps on the lower hose here. I don't know if we can see it in the screen. Down here. Tighten up some bolts and a water pump so that's all seated in place before I tighten down hose clamps. Slip on the fan belt while it's easier instead of having to go over the fan. Get that fan back on. Just gotta find a hole. Get this vent line back on. And maybe it goes like that. It does, it does. It's true, it's true. I get that bracket on for the alternator to tighten the belt. And I think it's, you know, where we can put cool, or well, Cool, it looked pretty kind of dirty. So I am gonna put just water in it, flush it out, drain that, and then put fresh antifreeze in it. I think everything's buttoned up. Let's put some water in it and uh, see if anything starts squirting out of places it shouldn't. Thought I had her drain. It's clearing up. And there it is. Other than spilling some of the hose, I am not seeing any leaks. I guess since it's a little over full, I might drain a little bit off. Nothing coming out the weep hole. That top spot there where the gasket wasn't quite right. No coolant squeezing out there. I think we're ready to Give it a test run. There should be enough carbon to gas, or enough gas in the carburetor to give it a quick uh, idle here before I put the tank in. Maybe I can um, make sure nothing's gonna leak here with that power steering line. Run 
quite a while on a carburetor worth of gas. Oh, I had to say that. Oh, look, it expanded enough already. It's coming out over the radiator cap because I overfilled it. We'll drain a little off, get the tank back in, put a little gas in it and run it some, stir everything up and then drain that coolant or that water out while it's stirred up and uh, then, it, then it should be uh, ready to dress back up. These, uh, well, well, the 270, the 1650, 1550 style, the dash actually screws into the fuel tank. There's weld nuts on the back side there. So once those are tightened down, it's pretty much where it's going to be. Most of the time I leave the fuel tank loose until I have the hood on, then I can kind of shift it around if I need to to center it up in the hole and then uh, then tighten the straps down but this only has a strap on the front so we'll get these tightened up okay now it's pointing at E instead of below E although I put that five gallon jug in it but I did uh, kind of when I placed the sending unit on this I made it so it reads E before it's actually E because that's better than running out of gas Do a little cross tour. Well, the corn evened up a lot now that we've gotten some rain. There's still definitely spots that have been uh, injured. I mean, look, that's tousled out. This ain't particularly a good spot. There was an old building buried here. But shoot, some of it ain't even as tall as the hood on the tractor. You get out in there, it's better. It's mostly just that spot. But there's a few spots like that. In the good year, that will do where it keep right along. Once you dig that deep, just stuff's never the same. You can see where the deer have been coming along here and hammering away at my whole corn. what this corn will do anymore the breeding they've done the genetics they've just uh, swear they got corn where it almost doesn't need water almost well let's stop and take a look make sure she ain't puking on us looking good looking good sign any leaks oh same back here she would have been dripping I think you got the problem with that one Ooh, what do we have here mm, blackberries 
Oh yeah, that's good. That one's good too. That one's good. Something's been eating on that one. Besides me. Oh, the good ones are over there. That looks good. Oh yeah. Hmm. Country living. These just grow around here. Well, I thought I was gonna get this baby all dressed up and uh, a friend called and but the more I looked at it as I was putting the antifreeze in, Oh, had a little bit of uh, seepage up in here. And so the uh, three-speed cooler is kind of caked over with oil and dirt. And of course it's oily up around the dash because of that power steering leak. So it's not gonna get any easier. I think she just needs to get a bath before the sheet metal goes back on. But I'm quite sure I have more than enough to make a video here. And um, so in order, in the interest of keeping it from getting super long, I'm just going to wrap it up. She's running. She's not leaking. I don't know if it'll get out to mow hay or not. But it'll do something eventually. So as always, I appreciate everybody watching, and we will see you in the next one.